What's up, y'all? Got a banger from Man Guide. Let's get straight into it. I'm just here to remind you that you should be obsessed with me. Why? Just a little bit. And you're you look like one of my uncles. Shots fired! Shots fired! What are you talking about? Illusion. This is going to ruffle some feathers, but I truly believe being a woman in your early 30s and single is truly the hardest. Societal pressure is at an all-time <laughs> You don't want to know what's harder? I'm <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. But dating in your 40s or 50s is much harder, honey. It doesn't get easier. To be in a relationship, most of your friends are going to be in relationships. They're going to be married. They're going to have kids. So you're going to feel that pressure even more. And sometimes you're going to feel extremely isolated. You constantly deal with people asking you about your relationship status. Why aren't you dating? Who are you dating? You're alone. Fear starts to kick in that you're running out of time. Pressure to settle for someone who might not actually fit the things that you're looking settle, for. Settle, honey. You're in your 30s. Stupid. At this point, she's a runner. She's a track star. You, you need to be grasping at straws. Whatever you can get. There's such a limited pool of men that are actually available. Most 31-year-old single men haven't really done the work. Jesse from Summer House, for example, he's going to jump from one girl to the next because he's tall, probably has a good job, lives in New York. But men that are in their early 30s are not really an option for us. And dating older, they're typically creepy where they just want a trophy wife. And dating younger, they're just mentally not there. They probably aren't looking for the same things. It's so challenging to manage a career while struggling to... Here, 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 here's something. What if the reason you're alone in your 30s is because it's because you're mentally not there? Shots fired! Shots fired! You ever thought about that? Looking like a porcelain doll? Oh shit! Oh, shit. the dating scene, actually find a meaningful connection. Then you also hit this point when you're in your 30s where you're really secure in knowing what you want. Actually okay being alone, but you're worried about people labeling you as undesirable or unsuccessful because of your single relationship status. But like you're missing out on experiences that- Single relationship? Honey, you're just alone. Call it what it is you would have if you did have a partner. And admittedly, I am a little bit fixed in my ways when it comes to my routine. When I was in my 20s, I was a bit more spontaneous with my day to day and you're going out a lot more. So as of right now, I am not dating. I am just focusing on my friendships, my career and me and that feels right. And that's what today's article is about. <laughs> the MGTOW reality of what happens when time runs out for modern women after they live that city girl <laughs> lifestyle. It's all fun and games when they're young, but when they hit the wall or finally ready to settle down, God. it's going to be a crisis when they can't find a man. Mm -hmm. And every year that goes by, it's going to be obvious to everyone that these females are used up and no one wants them. It's so bad, every dude. year it's going to be like the ghost that haunts them, especially during family holidays when they see everyone else taken. It's going to be dreadful for them. About why most young, ambitious guys are not dating right now. And I wasn't trying to stir up anything. I wasn't trying to start drama. I'm just telling it how it is. Like, this is why guys aren't dating right now. And it's because a lot of them are just grinding, right? They're working 80, 90 hour work weeks. They're climbing the ladder. They're working on their businesses. And a lot of the girls our age, especially the hot ones, they're having a good time. They're traveling. They're getting flown Going out. Going to Dubai, getting... She's a runner. She's a track star. Getting pooed on their chest. <laughs> oh, God, by Dubai princes and oil kings. Yeah, it's just the life they're living is much different than us. A lot of girls have a link in the bio just because they're getting flown out. Stupid. Us as men, we don't have that option. They're hanging out with people who are already successful. Mm -hmm. They're having fun, right? And I don't blame them. If I was a hot girl and I had people in my DMs, I would too. Facts. But what I said that angered a lot of these girls is that a lot of these dudes are waiting until they're older and more successful and have more time on their hands to date. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, like they have more options at that point because it's true. If Thanks. you work on yourself and you're like a high value man, then you have more options. But a lot of girls got really upset. Even a lot of girls that I went to college with, they're in the comments commenting like awful take. This is horrible. And so I'm a little confused because everything I said is exactly what they were doing. So are they upset that I'm exposing it? Are they upset that the guys aren't putting up with it? What's what's the deal? Because I remember right after college graduation, I don't think a single one of my friends went on a big Europe trip. They were grinding, working on their shit, while every single girl was posting pictures on yachts or in Portofino. So, like, it will make its way around. The truth hurts. That's all I'm going to say. Facts. Hey, I'm glad this man is out there preaching. Good for him. Preaching the gospel. Because, I mean, that's exactly what it is, dude.
that uh, women needed to have a hoe phase, right? Yeah. Not my words. I said yeah. party years in my, my book, but it's the hoe phase where it's like you're going to go and explore your options and have your journey of self-discovery. And then right around 29 years old, 30, 31, that's what I peg as the epiphany phase. And that's when women want to get right with God. And that's when they want to like settle down and they want to have, you know, uh, two, 2.5 kids and a golden retriever in the yard. And that's when you'll hear women say, we're all the good guys. We're all the nice guys. But they were left back in your 20s when you didn't want to sort of put a bet on a guy who had some potential and now mm -hmm. you're kind of out at 33 34 um as far as your selection is concerned meanwhile men at about 30 are on their ascent to their sexual market value peak because mm -hmm. it takes longer for a man to achieve the things that makes him maximally attractive and maximally arousing so the guy might have if he's played his cards right and he's maximized his potential by the time he gets to about 36 years old that's when he is the at his peak sexual market value and has if he's done every done everything right you know money muscles and game he has the same selection or if not better selection than the girl who's 23 years old who was on top of her game See, back, facts. this is why i say there's two different options right as a man you can either Pick a woman when you're both villagers. You could build the kingdom together. She can be your queen. You can be her king. Or you can build this kingdom by yourself. You become a king, and then you get to enjoy all of your concubines. It's really up to you. And, but the thing is, most women would next a man that she has to build something with. It almost never happens. She almost never wants to build a life with a man. She just wants to wait at the finish line and pick the winner. It's just how it is. I don't make the rules. I just enforce them, fellas. Back in the day, a woman who was single was single for a reason. Maybe she had some sort of disease. Maybe she was... Okay, so you're telling me... Uh -oh. I'm 24. At my age, my mother had two children. Mm -hmm. And I am sitting in a parking lot... Eating... Eating some groceries... Eating some gas station sushi. <laughs> 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 With those Roblox-ass sunglasses. Shots fired! Shots fired! <laughs> what? 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 sushi alone that's because you think your value is too high you think that you're too good for the men that are around you your life is a direct reflection of all the decisions you've made up until this point so if you feel like you're not happy with that look in the mirror after getting a matcha from a hot girl walk like I'm sorry but how did she live life Amy Horton is experiencing hitting the wall and documenting it live because she thought she had all the time in the world and that there would be some sucker waiting for her to finish wiping the nope. white DNA off her mouth to kiss her. That's more fantasy than the Lord of the Rings. No guy worth a <laughs> damn who's seen her on dating apps for years and maybe has slept with her is going to want to see her as anything but a leftover. She proved that the red pill is real. Mm -hmm. We've been saying for years. Let's get to the bullet points. One. My dating pool shrank before I even noticed. I was in a serious relationship for a couple of years, and then I was taking my time to recover from the breakup. When I was finally ready to date again, I looked around and realized that I had a serious problem. Everyone I meet is either married, in a committed relationship, or someone I don't want to date. Yikes. Yeah, she's being dishonest. When females say, took time to recover, or finding themselves, or took time to love themselves. She's a runner, she's a track star. That's exactly what that means when a girl says, I need to find myself. I need to go figure out what's going on. Um, yeah, like, come on, honey, stop it. Just got older and less attractive. Yeah. And the more partners that she's been with, and it's a bouncing bar graph, it kind of goes down like this, but the, but the trend is down. Basically, the more guys that she's been with, the higher probability is that she's going to be unhappy. Thanks. There's other issues that come with that. I mean, if she's been with more guys, a higher probability that she's had abortions, a higher probability she's got an ST. Number two, all the good guys I know are taken now. Facts. I, I always call it Frankensteining a man. She's like, well, Jason had good pee pee. And then Mark was funny. And then so-and-so had this. But then Jason had a good hairline. And then so-and-so had money. And so then they want to go out when they get back onto the market and they want to try to Frankenstein a man. And they're, they're trying to be like, well, I want to find the guy that had this and had that. The thing is, you're not going to get everything that you want, honey. It's just not going to happen. You're going to find a guy. He's going to have his ups. He's going to have his downs just like you. But a lot of women would next a man that has any sort of, uh, you know, any sort of shortcomings that um, she doesn't want to have to deal with, as opposed to getting with a man and helping him grow in certain regards. You know, relationships are a two way street and a lot of women just want it to be a one way lane. And it's just not the case. Exclusively different. 
settling with you. I have girlfriends in marriages right now who have settled with the nice, safe, secure guy we weren't all that attracted to. We didn't really want that much. We didn't have any chemistry with. We had meh sex with because we had to. Because the guy we actually felt passion and chemistry for doesn't want us or makes us so emotionally unhinged and erratic that we can't look ourselves in the mirror anymore. Normally, those guys that we settle for don't make it happen. To us, it's like, well, damn, if you're putting up with it, <laughs> okay, cool. If you're still here, cool. When you want to go, that's fine. But in the meantime, I got no one else. You're here to give it? Cool. I accept. But my God, I see how pathetic you are, and I will definitely use that to my advantage. We'd leave you in a heartbeat if someone better came along. Number four. Wow. Everyone I know is getting married. Granted, my friends back home have been Good married forever. Lord. Some of them are even divorced or remarried. Ignorant to like the average guy's experience. Consider this, right? The average guy today, his granddad had to put in a quarter of the work to mm -hmm. get the kind of woman that is four times as amazing as the woman. Oh, you're, are you talking? Facts. You're talking like about his gra like his grandmother was an amazing woman, a, a very very feminine natural woman, and his granddad yeah. really didn't have to do the kind of work he has to do right now Yo. as a young man. Do you agree with that? Do you agree with hoflation? Let me know in the comments. I definitely do. So, so you're talking about hoflation? Yes, it's hoflation. Hoflation. So modern men have to work five times harder than their grandfathers did for women twenty times worse than what their grandmothers were. It's true. It's actually true. Number five. The only viable guys are younger or divorced. Okay, that's not entirely true, but it's the majority. The younger dude relationships. That's the biggest problem. Let's go with, back. Uh, I just want to see. I think women bring bring way too much baggage into relationships. Yes. That's the biggest problem with uh Wait, but today. you guys bring baggage too, but in the way of you guys don't communicate your needs because of what she the last She just asked me did. how I felt about the women <laughs> you and see I was just saying. Right? <laughs> that's why I say women are children, dude. If she just asked him, how do you feel? And she's already, I'm automatically interrupting him. She's like, let the man speak. Right back to, yeah, I see, see where this is going. Yeah. see where this is going. <laughs> Anytime I try to say my opinion, she asks me for it. And then I say it. And then, or, 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 or. but men crazy. do this too. Now nah, we talking about the women right now. Right. Women bring a lot of baggage. That's, that's the biggest uh, problem when it comes to dating for me. I saw. Well, see, oh. and here's the thing. He's speaking openly about it. And he's just talking about women in general. But when women hear this, they take it personal. They're thinking, oh, he's talking exactly about me. I'm just throwing rocks, and if, you hit, if it hits you, holla. That's Charleston White, and he had a great quote. He's like, I'm just throwing rocks, and if it hits you, holla. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just throwing things out there, and if certain things like irk you and make you upset, maybe there's some validity to what I was saying. Same thing with this concept. If he's sitting there talking about things and saying, I think women have a lot of baggage in you, and you get in your feelings because of that, then more than likely you think you have a lot of baggage and you know you have a lot of baggage. So that's always funny to me. One thing I'm going to say is the thing, if we together and you're going to keep complaining about some shit, but you don't want to do nothing about it, don't f talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. People like always say, oh, I got to lose weight, this, that, and the third. But you don't go to the gym. Yeah. Yeah, word. Yep. That's yeah. a fact. Okay. All right. Number well, six. See, I, I can dig that because like, I hate... I hate the the difference between men and women in the regards of men always look for solutions to problems, but women like to fester on the problems. Oh. Oh. Um, and I'm like, I don't want to even think about the problem. I just want to get to the solution of the problem, be logical about it, and let's come to a common agreement on what we can do to fix it. But it's not what women usually think a lot of the times. It's a high value woman. Oh What's that? Can let's pause it there. Let me know in the comments. What do you think are the three things that make a high value woman? The three things. Don't worry, I'll wait. Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like the video as well. For me, it would be low body count, sub five body count. A lot of people would say virgins in the comments, but I'm like, dude, you know how hard it is to find a girl as a virgin? It's very tough. So sub five body count, still has hair, uh, high pair bonding. Uh, a woman that knows how to be a mother, has motherly qualities about her. She's you know caring, she's uplifting, she's empathetic, things like that. And then the third thing is, is she can follow my lead. If she can do that, Great, dude. We, I would consider her high value. Concepts foreign to you. you Concepts foreign to you. Modesty, modesty being demure. Modesty. What does mo modesty? Yeah, modesty in character, modesty in appearance, modesty in her demeanor. Mm -hmm. You just don't like it when a woman is outspoken. You're intimidated by that. Bitch, you just met me like 10 minutes <laughs> ago. Stupid. Finish her.
Number seven, <laughs> then my eight. finish her. <laughs> age or older are still single for a reason. I'm going to skip this. Yes, I'm still single too. This is for a reason. I won't settle for any just guy. Maybe these guys are too picky, but unfortunately, all too often, there are different reasons for their perpetual bachelorhood. Sometimes I don't really want to bro, stop it. Men are single. The, the men that are single, most of the time, they want to be single. And that's just as simple as it gets right there, honey. Like, if, if you're mad, just say that. If you're broke, just say that. If you can't handle it, just say that. Like, most of the time, men are single because they want to be single. A lot of baggage and trauma from... The this is a con. The vast majority of women that are out there, they carry around a lot of baggage and trauma from the past. One in five women are on SSRIs or antidepressants. They're overly entitled. They're bratty. They think that they're a 10 when they're really a four. They're mm -hmm. obese. They're covered in tattoos. You hear all these narratives and it's like the only way that you're going to get past all of that is if you're a top shelf guy. Number eight. Oh. Well, this is why the Kevin Samuels quote, man, I, I say it all the time. It's something that I've memorized because I think it's a great quote for all of us to remember and, you know, never forget this quote. But when you make the men of your present pay for the mistakes and trauma of the men of your past, there will be no future. And a lot of these women live by that. They're like, the I don't, I don't, I don't want to have a future with this guy. I want the when next the, guy to are, pay for, he said, are saying they I want the next guy to pay for all the mistakes and trauma of this previous guy that did me wrong. Stupid. Are, what he said are saying they deserve it, but they really don't. That's what so, I'm saying. Like have some self-awareness. Like women are delusional. I mean, yeah, like everyone feels so that they are exactly that they're delusional. Yeah, like yeah. the lady in the uh -huh. Dallas pod who's like, I deserve monogamy, but yet I'm not going to put out. <laughs> I'm newly celibate. <laughs> um, you like, better celibate of that coochie to somebody who cares. Shots fired! Shots fired! That's what I always say when you're celibate. You better celibate of that somebody. To, you better celibate to somebody who gives a damn. What she's saying, like for certain, like for a long courting period yeah. and all this. So they're delusional because they have this un unrealistic expectation yeah. of what they feel they deserve and that's the whole thing what they feel they deserve and here's my thing ladies if you've pooped out a whole other human ain't nobody need to be waiting for none of that you've already birthed an entire person out of that womb and you want somebody to wait wait for what the second human to be pumped out like come on <laughs> not gonna be sitting there like that is so dumb that is so dumb. Here's what you need to do. Go look in the mirror, fresh faced out of the shower and go rank yourself or have one of your friends rank yourself. That's actually keeping it real with you. This is why I say you need to have a tight circle of people that actually keep it a buck with you, bro. Because if you don't, you're going to go out there and you're going to be deluded in this, in this dating market. And this goes for guys too. Most of the time guys were a lot more realistic and like guys will really shoot it to you straight. Like if you went up, if, if one of my really good guy friends is like, Hey man, what, what do you, what would you, what do you rate me? One out of 10. What do you think other women? I would give it to him straight. I'd be like, bro, you can't dress. Your haircut's busted. Like, you don't take care of yourself. Your hygiene's bad. I'm like, bro, you got to fix this. This is something I was doing in college, bro. And if you if you want some of this help, book a one-on-one -on -one call with me in the description, but I will absolutely help you do this. Basically, giving guys like an image consultant. I was like an image consultant, basically. I would just come in. They would be like, what do I need to do to fix my look to, you know, be taken more serious at work and to be taken more serious by, you know, women? How to be irresistible to women and respected by men, just like the four pillars of personality ebook that I have. Um, but I would sit down with them and I'd be like, all right, man, let's go over your wardrobe. Let's go over your haircut. Let's go over how you walk. Let's go over the cologne that you use. Let's go over, you know, like your face shape, your body shape, how to take pictures, how to speak, your body language. We'd go over all that. And I'd basically give them a crash course on like how to be more attractive because a lot of guys just don't think about this stuff and so we'd go out first thing we'd always do is go get them a haircut get them a haircut and fit their face shape if you don't know what your face shape is go online and look up face shapes and go, go look up hairstyles that fit your, uh, fit your face shape that's going to help you out a ton if they could grow a beard i'd tell them grow a beard if they can't no worries and don't don't have any like thin wispy stuff the thin wispy ch do, do never do that it's either all or nothing go get a nice faded haircut that's why you guys always see because it gives us contour as guys we can't use makeup so we have to use contour with haircuts and beards and stuff like that Go do that. Number two, go at least get maybe two to three outfits that are neutral colors, maybe blacks, whites, tans, things that you can swap in and out that fit your body shape. A lot of guys just buy clothes because they think it looks cool. But the thing is, if you have a certain type of body shape, if you're tall and skinny, I don't think you should wear like super, super skin tight clothes because then you're just going to look like a pencil. And if you're a big dude, I don't think you should wear a lot of baggy clothes. I think if you're a bigger guy, you need to wear clothes that are a little more fitted to you, especially in the pants. You can maybe wear a shirt that's a little baggier, but just to hide the belly. 
but like it needs to fit you fitted clothes just look better you look more professional but then when you're a skinnier guy you can't wear skin tight things but you can wear things that are slim fit maybe not super super tight go get you a couple outfits things that are kind of like you can mix match them and then now let's get you a cologne uh, a good cologne um would be like e saint laurent and they have a good one um i think it would not not uh <sighs> You could get Creed Aventus, but that one's very expensive. That's a really good cologne. Club, Club de Nu, I think is what it is called on Amazon. It's like 40 bucks, Club de Nu. Uh, and it's Club D-E-N-U-I-T. It's like 35, 40 bucks. It smells just like Creed Aventus. Just maybe doesn't last as long, but it smells really good. And then go out there, take some good pictures, and then have some things on social media so when you do meet somebody, they can follow your social media. Oh, wow. This is what he looks like. Great. But like, you got to fix your haircut. You got to fix your style, and you got to fix the way you smell because the first... The first hole that you penetrate in a woman is her nostrils. <laughs> That's why you got to smell good. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.